Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're going to have a look at Crusader era daggers. Now this is a tricky area because if you look at the 15th century, 14th century, lots and lots of museum examples, lots of illustrations. Those are getting a bit thinner on the ground by the 13th century, there's not so much. You look at the 11th and the 12th century and there's virtually no sort of museum examples that you can absolutely date as being for that period. So then you can go back and you can have a look at the manuscripts and you can start to interpret things there. Now it is good, it's always good whenever you're doing research, to have a look at lots of different sources. This is about the best tip I can ever give you. Go to a website called myarmory.com. It's a chat room and it covers everything to do with medieval weaponry, whether it is crossbows or caltrops or saxes or spears or javelins or armour. It is a fantastic resource full of incredibly intelligent, incredibly useful and polite people. Myarmory.com. Go check it out. And that's where I got some of this information from. The first knife we're going to look at is the Sayax. This is a broken back example, typical for southern England, uh, Frankia, from um, around about, let's say, 950 through till the end of the Viking Age in southern England at sort of 1066. I assumed, I always assumed, that that's where they ended, until a fantastic thread on myarmory.com came up a few years ago asking this very question. And somebody posted up something called the Guido relief, which was a stone carved relief, I think it's in Germany, dated around uh, 1130 to 1150. It has some knives in there, which they could be saxes, they might not be saxes, but they look pretty sax-like. And then somebody posted up another picture, another manuscript picture, uh, from a manuscript called Liber Honorum ad Augusti. This one's dated 1194 to 1196. I would say quite clearly the knights in that picture are using broken back saxes. Broken back saxes just like this one. So that's dated uh, 1194, so let's say it's 1200 for convenience. So that means that most of the crusading period you are going to be absolutely fine with a broken back sax. I hadn't expected that. The next of the daggers we're going to look at is this one. It's an antenna dagger. This is based reasonably well on one in the uh, Royal Armouries called the X1302, very catchy title. They've dated it to around 1400. However, there is a, a manuscript illustration in the Rabanus Morus of Monte Cassino manuscript dated around 1070 that shows, at least the, the top guard here, very, very similar daggers to this. In that illustration, it has a straight guard here. But the top guard is, as far as you can tell, the same as this. Then there is, in the Morgan Bible, the Majewski Bible, dated um, around 1250. Again, very clear representations of these kind of daggers. And then going through to the Royal Armoury example of around 1400. So this dagger, again, is going to be entirely suitable for the whole crusading period. And then the last of them, again, is just a very straight and very ordinary looking quill and dagger. Very clearly, again, shown in the uh, manuscript Rubanus Morus and Monte Cassino. So these sort of knives are shown there. You see them again throughout the archaeological record, uh, really going up. Simple knives like this still around about 1650 being produced. But the heyday, I suppose you'd say, would be 14th and 15th century for a dagger such as this, a quill and dagger like this. So again, entirely suitable for the whole crusading period, uh, to the end of the crusading period. So really that's it. It's, we have three daggers here. Uh, all of which are available from toddcutler.com, but they're all suitable for the crusading period. This one ends around 1200, this one around 1400, and this one around about 1650, which is obviously well after the end of the crusading period. But it's a very difficult, very sketchy area for dagger information. Swords, loads of information, daggers, less so.